The real secret of Nikola Tesla wasn't a secret. It was the everyday process of resonance, and he told us this again and again in plain language. It's not an opinion, it's from his own mouth. It's in his patents, he told anyone who would listen. Now, if you already know what resonance is, this discussion may seem a bit basic for you. If you don't, I hope to explain it as best I can because resonance is one of the most important ideas you must grasp to not only understand the work of Tesla, but the very structure of the universe itself. Resonance in this discussion is not any kind of spiritual phenomena, and I don't mean metaphorical resonance either, I mean physics resonance. Resonance is written into the very fabric of the construct of the universe in essential ways. The light reflected from a surface is a process of resonance. The rotation of the Earth around the Sun and the bodies of the solar system around a supermassive black hole is all resonance. At every level of scale, resonance defines the processes that hold the entire universal construct together in a very direct and material way. Despite the imposing words in math, it's actually something very easy to understand. This is a graph of the effect of driven oscillation resonance. It doesn't mean much until you understand the basic definitions involved in resonance, so I'm going to try to simplify this as best I can so the definitions used here are the minimum amount of information required to understand. There is more, a lot more, but hopefully this will be enough to give you some place to start looking. Here goes. Resonance is the tendency of some systems to oscillate at a higher amplitude when a force is applied to them at a natural frequency. Okay, so let's take that apart. First, what is a system? It's just a structure with a resonant frequency. A building frame, a bridge, a glass, a cavern, a tidal pool, an electron orbital, it can be almost anything that resonates. Oscillation is just going back and forth between two extremes, up and down, positive and negative, hot and cold. Anything with two states can oscillate. Amplitude is just the amount of the oomph, like volume when speaking of sound or the height of an ocean wave. Frequency is just how many times a second something oscillates. It's usually measured in hertz. The hertz is the unit of frequency in the international system of units, equivalent to one event per second. For example, most homes in the United States have power piped in at 60 hertz. That means it oscillates, changes from positive to negative, essentially just changing direction 120 times per second, which is 60 full cycles, 60 oscillations, 60 hertz. Driven oscillation resonance is when you add energy to something at a specific frequency to try and make it resonate. A natural or resonant frequency is a number of oscillations per second which, if applied externally to a system to add energy, will cause the system to accumulate energy in oscillation at that frequency. All that being said, the definition of resonance again. Resonance is the tendency of some systems to oscillate at a higher amplitude when a force is applied to them at a natural frequency. This graph shows you what happens when the ratio between the natural frequency of the system, the resonant frequency, and the frequency you're putting energy into the system at gets closer to one to one. This means this graph shows you what happens to any system as the frequency you're driving it at gets close to the resonant frequency. The big bulge in the middle means that as the ratio gets closer to one to one, perfect resonance, a system with no external resistance, called damping, will receive an almost unlimited amount of energy from the driving force. Now let me explain this more visually. This is the solar system. It is a resonant system. Each of the planets has a resonant frequency or orbit. They conserve the energy that they had at the initial moment of capture by the sun's gravity in oscillation at their natural frequency. The Earth's natural frequency is roughly 365 days a year. That's a very, very small number of hertz. It is, however, a very big system with an immense amount of energy in it. The complete stability of the orbit, its tendency to not significantly decay despite the fact that no external energy of note is being added to it means that the resonance must be very finely tuned. If it was a tad bit off, the energy would decay faster. If it was a different shape, say a perfect circle, we might be moving much, much faster. If the initial energy of the Earth when it was captured by the sun's gravity was too high, we might have just been flung off into space like a highlight ball. And if the energy was too small, our orbit would have decayed and we'd have been burned up by now. Instead, we're in a perfect game of catch and release with the sun, which degrades an amazingly small amount every year. The energy of one very high amplitude impulse, whatever it was that set the Earth in motion in the first place, has been conserved for billions of years in a very stable oscillation at a resonant frequency called an orbit. This bridge is a system with a resonant frequency. It is a resonant system. That is, the frequency it's waving at is the resonant frequency. Oscillation at its natural frequency is also currently tearing it apart. Add the energy of wind across the deck the support cables, and all of their supporting wires, and the system starts to store the simple energy it's getting from the friction of air molecules against it. The simple strike of an air molecule does not have much energy, but if that energy is conserved, it adds up quickly. 
Most times, this kind of bridge is reinforced by supports underneath that damp the effect, but this bridge wasn't, and hence began to store energy in oscillation at its resonant frequency because it was permitted to oscillate freely. Now this is an example of a high amplitude energy input at no specific frequency. The energy was accumulated and stored in oscillation at the bridge's resonant frequency of motion. Destructive resonance. Driven oscillation resonance is very much the opposite. The simplest example of this principle is a swing. A swing is a resonant system, and once you get going, you don't have to kick very hard to keep going. The system preserves the initial impulse in oscillation at its resonant frequency, the number of times it goes back and forth per second. The kicking is adding energy to the system at a specific frequency. The kicks are low amplitude impulses at just the right frequency to increase transmissibility. Each swing adds a little bit of energy, which increases the amplitude of the swing. It's a big number of small amplitude impulses, which act just like a big one. Every oscillation between forward and back in the maximum arc of the swing, you add a tiny bit of energy at just the right number of kicks per second to make the oscillation grow in amplitude. You ever notice it's easier to push somebody already swinging than to get somebody going from a dead stop? That's because there's already energy in the system when they're already moving, and you're just adding a little bit at a time. Every time the swing goes up, gravity starts to pull it back down again like a big rubber band, and when the band is stretched fully with an amount of energy equal to the energy of the system, gravity pushes you back down again with almost all of the energy you stretch the rubber band with. This is called potential energy. The band becomes a slingshot, and the energy of the system is stored in gravitational potential energy to a large degree, just like all the energy in a slingshot is stored in the rubber band. The swing system has a damping effect at high amplitude. That is, you cannot push someone so hard they will accelerate fast enough to keep the chain taut and allow a full 360. At least a single human can't. Therefore, energy will always leak out of the system at a high enough amplitude. You're not likely to get disastrous resonance here, but at a high enough amplitude, you will fall off. This glass is a system. It has a resonant frequency, which will immediately be discovered if you flick it gently on the rim. A one impulse against the side of the system, the glass, causes it to store that energy in oscillation at its resonant frequency. In this case, it plays a lovely note. If you use a frequency meter and discover that exact note, that exact frequency, and then play that exact note, that exact frequency, at it through a speaker at the right amplitude, the right volume, you get disastrous resonance. Now, the closer you get to the right frequency, the less amplitude you need. The closer the ratio between the note you're playing and that frequency gets to one to one, the more energy is transmissible from the sound waves to the glass and the more energy it will store in oscillation at that frequency. It is rare to find a non-professional frequency detector, which can give you much more than a couple decimal places of accuracy in determining the frequency of the glass. And this is actually an amazing demonstration of the principle of the process. If you have a frequency generator and you play the detected resonant frequency of the glass from a speaker, it will vibrate, but not really shatter unless you increase the volume. The transmissibility is quite low at so imprecise a tuning of the input frequency. If you take your time and tune to four, five, six decimal places, and it will take forever to test the frequency spectrum for the right one. But if you're as meticulous as Tesla was, and you do the work, you'll notice you're getting closer because the glass will start to vibrate at shockingly large amplitudes without you altering the volume or amplitude setting at all. This can't go on indefinitely, of course. The frequency matching tuning will eventually get close enough to one to one that too much energy is being transmitted to the glass by the sound waves and has nowhere to go. The glass will explode because it is oscillating at far too high an amplitude to remain coherent. It literally shakes itself apart. It is absorbing too much energy, disastrous resonance. Tesla used this phenomena in many of his works. He even told a story of using his small mechanical oscillator to almost bring a building down. Exact same principle as the glass. By attaching a small mechanical oscillator of only a few pounds to the right part of a building frame, he came pretty close through very careful tuning to destructive resonance. Resonance was the basis of much of his work and the single most valuable tool in his workshop. Uh, later he would learn to use electromagnetic oscillators to great effect in much the same way he did his mechanical oscillator. He used driven electromagnetic oscillation to power lights and other small devices first. He even invented the first remote control boat using this principle. He also used driven oscillation to create a huge energy storage in many of his devices and played with how this could be used to affect larger systems with the potential to store and possibly transmit large-scale stored oscillatory energy in chains of resonant systems he wanted to set in motion together. He worked very hard at trying to make the key of resonance open a door for him and help him solve the single greatest problem known to mankind, energy. 
In his mind, the problem of energy broke down into three distinct problems. One, how to make power. Two, how to store power. Three, how to transmit that power without wires. He invented the AC generator to make the power. In the end, he thought he had a solution to problems two and three that could accomplish both goals with one answer. Storage and transmission could, he thought, be solved by the same system. If you have a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, you can move the world. If you have a big enough oscillator, thought Tesla, you can also move the world. Now, from the beginning of his research in New York, it seems to me that Tesla had a purpose in mind. Uh, that purpose involved using resonance as the intended method of solution in a great problem. It seems also like the Tesla coil was the tool he designed to study the problem and possibly solve it. Now, early on, he was simply in designing bigger and better oscillators to do this job. The invention of radio, which also works entirely through electromagnetic resonance, actually was credited to another man, Marconi, who simply built on Tesla's already established work in resonance during this time. Tesla wasn't interested in radio as much as he was interested in developing a specific tool. His work on the Tesla coil involved resonance so finely developed that it gave birth to radio almost incidentally. It showed everyone else trying to understand radio, how radio actually worked, and the rest was just the assembly of machines he had already patented, into one he couldn't be bothered with inventing at that moment. He was just too busy trying to make an electromagnetic resonator he thought could transmit power rather than just news and sports. He settled on the Tesla coil pretty early in the process and then worked doggedly on refining it. Now the Tesla coil seems really complex, but in reality, it's just a driving oscillator. A simple way to think of it is a big ball of electrons moving up and down like an electromagnetic jackhammer. Keep in mind, Physical oscillators drive physical systems, electromagnetic ones drive electromagnetic systems. The Tesla coil was not an end unto itself. Again, it was a tool. And once he had a solid design capable of doing what he needed done, he took it out for a walk in Colorado Springs. At Colorado Springs, he built a large coil, grounded it deep, and proved exactly what he meant to prove to himself. At Wardenclyffe, he built a massive, much more refined Tesla coil with a deep ground antenna and a huge tower. His lab at Warden Cliff in New York, I believe, was meant to prove something to the world. Now, the Tesla coil is meant to drive electromagnetic oscillation at a very specific frequency using a large amplitude of oscillating electromagnetic charge as an electromagnetic piston of great force. And the largest of these was the one at Warden Cliff. He built a huge, tunable electromagnetic oscillator at Warden Cliff. So the next natural question is, what system was he using the Tesla coil at Warden Cliff to drive at resonance? And how did he expect the energy would be conserved?